Yo, 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 what is up, fam? Fan of here, and guys, let's re listen to, let's uh, react to the rapper who uh, turned himself into a meme. This one's, I think it's about YBM Namir, guys, so. Gonna have major longevity in the music industry, as he was dropping songs that were getting hundreds of millions of views and growing a fan base among. Oh, yeah, I think it's, it might still be the number one most viewed video on World Star Hip Hop, guys. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's still the number one video, most viewed, but last I checked, it was guys. Amongst the younger generation. Fast forward to 2023, and he's looked at as a joke by many people in the rap space. How you? Oh, come on now. All right, all right. How you? I'm gonna let you talk. How you went from GD to Crip? How I went from GD to Crip? It happened. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? What the? Talking about gang-related stuff. I cannot relate, guys. I don't. Do not know. Do not know. <laughs> so how does someone go from a platinum recording art? Oh, is he artist to be? He's doing the push-ups on the the sidewalk, I guess. Being looked at as a meme. What's up, y'all? My name is Corin XV, and today we're gonna be talking about the very weird career of YB and Namir. But before we do that, can you do me a favor, like the video, sub to the channel, and hit the noti bell? Now. Nah? All right, we'll do, we'll do. Let's get into the video. So Namir's career really started to pop off after the release of his single Rubbing Off the Paint. Pretty much, that's all I know his song. That's the only song I know about him that he, that he really did and that went super, super viral, guys. Now, around this time, Namir wasn't really taking rap serious, but after seeing the success of the song, he decided to dive all the way in. I made Rubbing Off the Paint, dropped the audio, that shit hit like 100K. Don't, I was like, all right, we finna shoot the video. Boom, drop that on my channel here, like 200K. And World Star hit me up. They was talking about let us upload it. Boom, now you feel me? They uploaded it, hit a meal, like, hit a meal in half a day type shit. And Bro, that's such a good amount of numbers to get, man. Not gonna lie. It's up from here. He will continue to build a name for himself with songs like Bounce Out With That and The Race Free. Now, I do know about Bounce Out With That, though. Style. And he was actually. Not, not so much about the race. ...being seen as an artist to take serious. As many of his peers at the time were being labeled as mumble rappers, Namir was actually being held in high regards for actually rapping. But unlike many artists that fall off, Namir's problems didn't come from the music he was putting out, at least in the beginning. See, one thing you'll notice about Namir in the beginning of his career was he was very focused on trying to push YBN to be a big brand. He wanted it to be a big rap group, and he wanted all his friends to be members. There's so many, uh... Like rap groups with like three letter names, guys. I, I don't like. I know it's abbreviation, but it's quite often. Quite often. You think you think YBN helped start it for sure, right? There was Namir, Almighty J, Corday, Glizzy, Manny, and many other members that Namir was trying to help elevate with the success he was getting in his own career. And to some degree, it was actually working. Namir was able to get two of his friends' careers to pop off. YBN, Almighty J started to gain. Oh yeah, that's how we know. I know Wal I know Almighty J, guys. I know Almighty J for sure. I think he, I think he posts like good songs. And some buzz with the song Chopstick, and he'd also collaborate with Namir on some songs. And the same thing would go for YBN Corday, who started to gain large amounts of attention after releasing remixes to Eminem and J. Cole's songs, as well as singles like Kung Fu and Scotty Pippen. And every time Namir went to do an interview, he brought J and Corday with him. This way, he'd be able to expose them to larger groups of people, hoping that the people would check out their music. Yeah, and I know I'll, I know Alma J for sure, but Corday, I don't know much. Namir, everybody knows Namir at this point, guys. This video helped me actually uh, know what world star hip hop is, guys. And music, and in return, grow their brands and their careers. Why well, again? Yeah, it's some shit I started. You feel me? Well, not me, but just me and my niggas actually. But like. You know, I was the first to blow up out of this shit, so you feel me? Motherfuckers called me the head honcho and glitchy. But shit, you feel me? Jay blowing up, and now Corday coming up too, so you feel me? We just got and his, his necklace looks so shiny, guys, not gonna lie. Got a bunch of shit coming soon, you feel me? We just some young bosses. You feel me? Now everybody get their change, man, because we some young. Oh, he has the same clear case as me, guys. The phone case. Boss, let's go, let's go. So, <laughs> it is what it is, all that. <laughs> And on paper, this doesn't look like a bad thing, but at this point, Namir hadn't even been out for a whole year yet, and he was already trying to put on two people. The reason a Drake co-sign or a J. Cole feature can solidify someone's career is because they're mainstays in hip-hop. They have bodies of work that fans love and respect, so if they say somebody- 
I wish I had some like that, man. That'd be cool. Oops. Is next up, fans are more likely to give that person a chance. But to a majority of hip hop fans, Namir still needed to prove himself. He only had a couple of viral songs, which at that time wasn't uncommon for upcoming artists. And when it was facts, bro, he, he needs to try, he needs to have good reception on the album, guys, or the mixtape for it to really take off. It was time for Namir to prove himself and drop his first album. He dropped a collective mixtape with him, Almighty J, and Corday. Yeah, so he wasn't lying about trying to put on his friends, guys. The the uh, triple mix mixtape right here. Most of the songs being singles that had already been out. It also didn't help that around this time, Corday was beginning to outshine Namir. In 2019, Corday would release his debut album, The Lost Boy, and it was being critically praised. People saw Corday to be very lyrically mature, and he would even go on to get a Grammy nomination off this album. Many people. Dang, bro, I, I still don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a cool, um, a cool music video though, for sure. Started to say that Corday was the best rapper out of YBN, but nonetheless, Corday would continue to grow. And strangely enough, Namir wasn't dropping any music at this time. He would later go on to reveal that this was due to label issues, but this dude, it always happens, bro. Why? Why? They tell him not to release songs whatsoever. Still wasn't a good look for him. And eventually, Corday would come out saying that he was dropping YBN from his name and just going by Corday. And Snap, he just betrayed uh, Namir here, guys. Namir would publicly speak on this saying that he was the only one holding down the YBN brand. Now, Namir's career was slowly losing momentum day by day, but everything would change after the release of his debut album, Visionland. Three years after dropping the YBN mixtape, Namir finally dropped a solo project and people hated it. The album only- What? No way. Took him three years to drop a- dude. Wow, man. L labels be playing so much, man. We gotta wait like 10 years almost for some freaking song. The YBM mixtape, Namir finally dropped a solo project and people hated it. The album only sold 4,000 copies first week. And if you know anything about first week sales for a signed artist, that's way below average. Well, at the 4,000 guys, usually like 15,000 would be low, man. But 4,000 of all things, man. Everybody forgot about Namir, man. It's like they tried to destroy his career. Not, not having a, a, a freaking release songs for years and years like that, man. Average. But ironically enough, when the album did drop, the internet couldn't stop talking about it. And it was mainly due to one song that Namir put on the track list. A song titled Soul Train which were going to become one of the biggest memes in hip hop. Every time I with you. <laughs> <laughs> bro, what the fuck? Pause this shit, bro. He serious? <laughs> it's not a troll? Oh my God, it's not a troll. <laughs> that was on the album. Yes, he put it on. Uh, <laughs> the song was so unironically bad that people thought Namir was just doing anything to get attention. And if that was the case, it did work because Soul Train was the most streamed and most viewed song on the entire album. But I hey, at least one song is going to have that uh, title on the album, right, guys? Honestly, it just had to be a terrible time for Namir because the internet was clowning him and even his peers in the rap game were clowning him. And I felt like there's nothing that Namir could do unless having the best song in the world that would prevent them from hating. Like, uh, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Uh, or do you think it's trash too? I mean... Even academics clowning on on Namir's tracks here, guys. That's my I'm gonna keep it on it, bro. That shit ass, bro. I ain't like that shit. I, I, I ain't gonna say the whole project ass, bro. But that soul train, that soul train, so definitely some shit. Bro. But after Vision Land, Namir was just kind of looked at as a joke, and it seemed like a lot of people were just trying to take any reason to clown him. He started to do a lot of paid promotion posts on Instagram, and for an artist, this wasn't really a good look. So people started to say he was. Hey bro, needed the money, man. I respect the grind. Bro, Namir also started to get into a beef with Almighty J, and this really wasn't a good look, especially because Namir started claiming that he was a crip, even though this was something he had never did before. Dang, bro. Yeah, I just came to do that birthday. I came here. Don't see artists really game banging that much. If they do, they kind of like get pushed away. Your oh, birthday you party in December. You been a bitch, nigga, on crip, nigga. What are you talking about? Nigga, wanna do it to you? Listen. Namir's a crip? Oh shit. 
on Papa Red Bull for this. Not, not always, not always. I apologize. They don't always get pushed away in the industry, but I don't, you don't see them, uh, you know, actively always saying, you know, gang banging stuff. I don't know. Apologies. On top of this, he was getting clowned on by a guy he had been close to for years. So this just made the internet clown him even more. Where that shit came from, you not like that, bro. You went live and said you pop niggas. You don't pop niggas. You went live and said you whoop niggas. You don't whoop niggas. You went live and said niggas know how you get down. Nobody know how you get down. What, what the fuck is you talking about? Namir would also start beefing with an underground rapper named Jace, and this was mainly. Hey man, the beefs are prominent here, guys. Why is he beefing so much? Due to the fact that Jace had called Namir out for claiming that he was a crip after supposedly Namir had been claiming he was a GD. And you know, if you know anything about that type of stuff, you're not really allowed to switch teams. So when Namir hopped on IG Live and got asked how he went from GD to Crypt and he said it just happened, it made a lot of people think he was faking. You not gonna Only explain yourself. All you gonna open your mouth you're and say is some dumb ass shit. You're not gonna answer the I'm question. Talking, nigga. What the fuck is you talking? How you I I how you I'ma let you talk. How and it seems like a heated argument, man. How you went from GD to Crypt? I do I do like how they have um You could do like a simul simulcasting here. On, on here on on instagram you can't really do it on youtube but you can uh, do it on tiktok you can do it on instagram and uh, you can do it on twitch now crip i went from gd to crip it happened <laughs> bro what the fuck what the fuck there is no way on body dang it was uh in the top of the music game now is everybody's clowning on him guys man no it's kind of sad to see it. No you joke, bro. You Jesus didn't even. Christ, there bro. is no fucking way you just said. But let's get to the most important part of this video. Can YB and Namir make a comeback? And to be honest, I think so. Even though a lot of damage was done to Namir's career, I felt like a lot of it was self inflicted. And to be honest, I don't think a lot of people really cared about a lot of events that were going on. Like the whole GD to Crip thing. I don't think anybody saw Namir as a gangster. Yeah, man. It he only had one album so far, guys. He needs to put out a good music video. I think that would help. Or at least any of his fans. So I don't think they'll really care about that. That's not holding them back. And on top of that, I always feel like everybody in the music industry is only one hit away from getting a resurgence. And we actually saw this with Namir in 2019 with his song Opstopper. He dropped the song. It took a little while to catch steam and then it started blowing up on tiktok and when it blew up on tiktok he was able to capitalize with it get a feature from 21 savage and i now okay feel like he could do the same thing because if you go to his youtube channel he's been dropping music and even though it hasn't been getting the the biggest numbers if you go to the comment section there's clear support so yeah, uh, they, they like his stuff that's good to hear man so he's still putting out music and that's not a bad thing you know what i mean as long as there's support for your music, there's always room for your music to grow. But only time will tell how things will work out for him. I hope you can make a comeback though, because I really rocked with rubbing off the paint back in high school. And if you made it to the end of this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and join the XV family. Until then, it's been Corin XV, and I'm off this. Alright, that's a cool uh, video, man. You're a totally new content creator. Maybe a meme, but I respect a man who's got to let his friends eat. Does YB and Almighty J still have the YB tag? I, get, I don't think he does, guys. At the end of the day, you have to respect the fact that he put his homies on game and wanted to share and come up together. How many people do that? He dropped an album three years late and it has easily some of the worst songs ever. Makes it so messed up. And labels be cucking for reals, bro. Uh, we actually seen a video like that before. Um, but yeah, guys, that's our video, guys. And I think I reacted it to either on this channel or the main channel, guys. So, later, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out, everyone. I like, comment, subscribe. Uh, you know, donations are appreciated, guys. Check out original creator description later.